Shen Qingqiu cleared his throat, confirming that his clothes were neither torn nor crooked, but his appearance was all in place before saying, This master is fine. He suddenly recalled how, the day before, the other Luo Binghe's body had been covered in wounds, his skin split and bleeding. He feared that this one might not have left and scathed either and quickly asked, What about you? Are you injured? Luo Binghe nodded. It's all healed already. Shen Qingqiu grabbed his wrist and flipped it over. Upon his palm was a white scar that could be called neither faint nor clear. Shen Qingqiu's heart stirred at the sight. What happened exactly? Where have you been these last two days? Why is he here? Luo Binghe shook his head. This disciple doesn't know. The day before yesterday, I'd secluded myself within the underground palace's inner halls when Qing Mo's fragments unexpectedly glowed purple. Then this person appeared, and in his hand was another Xing Mo. I exchanged blows with him, but in a moment of carelessness, I entered one of Xing Mo's rifts, which sealed closed behind me. I only had enough time to swipe the sword from him. When I returned, I couldn't find Shi Zun, so I could only head to Changqiu Mountain. Ah, oh, so for these past two days, Luo Binghe had been in Proud Immortal Demon Wei's original world, and Xing Mo's space-severing slash were already at that heaven-defying level of OP? Its slashes could slice apart even the space between parallel universes. That was no longer something you could explain away by calling it a mere bug. And now a homegrown green JJ gay had found himself in one of Zhong Dian's uncountable harems of beauties. The child must have been frightened out of his wits. Shen Qingqiu couldn't help the tender fondness <clears throat> that welled up within his heart. But he suddenly heard a voice say coldly, Excuse me, I'm still here. Could you not leave me hanging? The original Luo Binghe was used to forever being at the center of everyone's attention, watching this duo jump on each other at first sight, thoroughly ignoring his existence and being all cloying and disgusting, filled him with an unspeakable irritation. With a subtle burst of force from his foot, he soundlessly smashed several of the stones beneath it into a fine powder. Luo Binghe shielded Shen Qingqiu behind him, his tone ominous. What were you doing just now? Just playing around, the other Luo Binghe said mildly. Shen Qingqiu was stunned silent. Playing around with who? Playing around with me? Binghe! You'd, you'd accept all comments? Welcoming both men and women? Is this something like, quote, both meat and fish are fine? I'm not picky, I'll eat whatever I'm given? Or was it because this Luo Binghe had failed to collect even a single member of the original harem, leaving the other Luo Binghe deprived until he couldn't take it any longer? Binghe humphed. Who made you so useless? He asked disdainfully. To think you have not a single woman. His standard for, quote, uselessness was practically a drunkard's, but Luo Binghe's focus wasn't on this at all. In his fury, scarlet blood seemed about to drip from his eyes, and he said sharply, You dare humiliate Shi Zun like this? The other Luo Binghe's eyes also flooded with crimson as he met that gaze and sneered. <laughs> How am I humiliating him? Look at that worthless appearance of yours to think you'd be so unsightly when you're also Luo Binghe. You even spent all day messing around with Shen Qingqiu, that depraved degenerate. He had yet to finish his sentence when Luo Binghe exploded. Dark qi suffused the interior of the bamboo house to the point that one couldn't have seen their hand in front of their face. Neither protagonist was willing to yield an inch. But then a ray of white light lanced in from above. It appeared that while throwing spiritual blasts around haphazardly, the poor rafters in the bamboo house's ceiling had suffered and due collateral damage. A large hole had been blown open. Wobbinghe raised his head 
and gazed upward, his face darker than even the demonic energy he'd been firing off. Shantinchu had approximately the same expression. Motherfucker, how are we supposed to explain when Anding Peak comes to make repairs? Luo Binghe was unwilling to destroy the bamboo house. He jumped out the door and yelled, Come out here! The original flavor humped. <laughs> Perfect. I wasn't able to let loose inside that run-down little house. The two silhouettes, one black and one white, vanished in an instant. Meanwhile, Shen Qingqiu pondered whether calling Bai Zhan Peak would result in them trying to kill both Luo Binghe's indiscriminately. At this moment, Ming Fan and Ning Yingying rushed in with a group of disciples behind them. By Shen Qingqiu's guess, they'd been doing their evening reading when they heard the strange noises and hurried over. Some of them were carrying Gu Qing, while others held books. Halt, said Shen Qingqiu. The entire group of disciples quickly stood at attention. Ming Fan opened his mouth to ask, Shi Zun, what's going on here? Line up, Shen Qingqiu interrupted. The Qingjing Peak disciples lined up promptly, as if by reflex. Go down and run laps around Qingjing Peak, thirty of them. If Shen Qingqiu tried to shoo them away after letting them know what was going on, these kids would unquestionably refuse. They'd even insist on staying to help, but really to make a mess. Better then to just shoo them off before it reached that point. As he had issued such a direct command, the disciples all looked at one another. If their Shi Zun wanted them to run, they would run. A group of teal-robed boys and girls ran down Qingjing Peak in a trailing conga line, one after another. Now that he directed them away, Shen Qingqiu let out a sigh of relief. Then he turned around, taking off toward the bamboo forests at the back of the mountain. While the original flavor Luo Binghe had complete control over Xingmo sword, the Luo Binghe who Chen Qingqiu had raised, whether due to an unstable psyche or surplus of distracting thoughts, was prone to suffering its recoil and psychic assaults. Therefore, the latter was probably leery of carelessly handling Xingmo sword, meaning his hands were somewhat tied. It was likely for this exact reason that he'd taken the initiative to bind and seal the blade with paper talismans. Holding a golden finger while being too afraid to use it was like holding a golden bowl, but being unable to ask for rice. With the sword still in its sheath, they seemed to have engaged in a brawl, but this brawl was packing way too much destructive power. Dozens of yawning ditches had already been gouged in the ground. Bamboo toppled and sent fallen leaves scattering, while roosting birds soared into the sky with frightened cries. If this continued, the quote, clear and tranquil, Qingjing Peak was going to end up shaved into a bald-headed Tuding Peak. The second he spied a gap between the two, Shen Qingqiu prompted Xiaoya Sword to lunge at the original flavor with a shriek. Silver light sparked back and forth as a blade streaked towards narrowed eyes. The other Luo Binghe abruptly moved his head and flicked the sword away, then asked with head still cocked, We are clearly the same person, so why does Shi Zun help him but hurt me? Like, fuck, you're the same person! The Luo Binghe he'd raised was a centric maiden Luo, Aka Bing Mei, whose story following Shen Qingqiu's plot interference, had by the system's grace been reshuffled onto the Green Changes' Danmei page. He wasn't a Zhongdian Stallion novel lead like this guy, with his, quote, cool badassery oozing out of every pore in his head full of vulgar thoughts who'd farmed and leveled up on low IQ villains and side characters. No, he's nothing like you at all! Shen Qingqiu kept his mouth shut and didn't answer. He met gazes with Luo Binghe, and without needing any further words, they attacked the original as one. From the beginning, there hadn't been much difference in power between the two Luo Binghe's. The original's injuries 
had mostly been due to Luo Binghe hacking at him. With the addition of Shen Qingqiu, the balance slowly tipped. Amidst sword glares as snow white and airy as soaring dragons, spiritual energy and black qi roiled and intertwined, working seamlessly in concert. The original Luo Binghe narrowly avoided several waves of attacks and squinted a little. He seemed angry, but not enough to express his emotions further, only pursing his mouth. Suddenly he said, With that technique that bad, what's so good about him anyway? When this line came out of nowhere, Shen Qingqiu's hand trembled a little, but he forced it down and continued attacking. Unfortunately, Bing Ge refused to restrain himself. Shi Zun, you've already experienced my prowess. Since we're the same person, why not come with me? I'll definitely give you more pleasure than he could. Shut up, snapped Shen Qingqiu. Already experienced, muttered Luo Binghe. Concentrate on the fight, said Shen Qingqiu. What does he mean by already experienced? What does he mean by, quote, more pleasure than he could? Oh, perhaps, the original said ambiguously. Shi Zun actually likes it when it hurts. Even if that's the case, this disciple guarantees that he could satisfy you. In that instant, Luo Binghe's face twisted. In what seemed like an unconscious action, he placed his hand on Xinmo's sword. Don't draw it! Shen Qingqiu urgently yelled. Only then did Luo Binghe come back to himself. He removed his hand right away, but the crimson of his eyes became even more intense and his breathing quickened as well. He gritted his teeth and threw himself forward, taking the initiative to shift to close quarters combat. In a direct brute force confrontation, as their power levels and techniques were identical, the consequences they suffered were twinned as well. Shen Qingqiu heard a muffled crack. One Luo Binghe had broken his left arm, the other his right, and both limbs now dangled limply. Their reactions were also the same. With their arms broken, they kicked, and so another cracking noise sounded. This time, it was their legs. Shen Qingqiu couldn't take it anymore. Enough! If they went on fighting like this, did they intend to perish together? The original's expression suddenly gentled as he looked at Chen Qingqiu. Shi Zun, do you blame me for making things too painful last time? Luo Binghe went wide-eyed. Shi Zun, you've met him before? If an encounter in the system counted as a meeting, then... That was a yes. Not wanting to give a half-hearted answer, Shen Qingqiu said, It was only a chance meeting. Bing Ge really knew how to push someone's buttons. It was my fault last time, he said mournfully. This disciple admits his wrongdoings. But just now, didn't Shi Zun find my touch most pleasurable? We're both disciples. So how can you bear to treat me like this? Fake! You fake, are you still faking? As expected of Bing Ge, that two-faced backstabber with his honey tongue and belly full of knives, who could smile and agree with you while stabbing you a thousand times in his heart. The male leads in Zhong Dian's grim dark works were truly sinister. By taking this tact, he was obviously trying to disrupt Luo Bing Ge's focus. Of course, Shen Qingqiu couldn't let him succeed. He snapped back, his words ambiguous and full of righteousness. It wasn't pleasurable in the slightest. The second after he spat these words, a powerful, numbing wave of heat surged within his belly. It was impossible to ignore and impossible to suppress, as if thousands of ants were sluggishly crawling about inside his body. The corner of, quote, Luo Binghe's lips twitched upward as he said, cheerful and ominous. You still insist on lying about your feelings? 
heavenly demon blood. How could he forget? As long as it was a Luo Binghe, he could control the blood mites within Shen Jingqiu's body. Two Luo Binghe's openly competed with each other, one agitating the blood mites, the other suppressing them. And the result was that numbing weakness and prickling heat ebbed and flowed through Shen Qingqiu, coming in waves as they rapidly spread from his abdomen to his entire body, even to his fingertips. Shen Qingqiu gulped a couple of painful breaths, his vision blurred, and the hand holding his sword began to tremble. The moment Luo Binghe was distracted, the Xinmo sword at his waist was snatched away. The original flavor gave them a gleeful smile, a hint of bloodthirsty excitement within it. Right as he grasped the hilt, ready to draw the sword from its sheath, Shen Qingqiu suddenly said coldly, Don't celebrate too early. Look above you. At this moment, the only things above their heads were rustling twigs and leaves of bamboo, swaying and undulating in the wind. The original didn't need to raise his head to tell that no threat awaited him above, and he smiled slightly. That sort of ploy is for dealing with little children. Trying to trick your disciple that way is a bit too condescending. You won't look, all right, you brought this upon yourself. Shen Jinjiu formed a seal with his left hand and crisply snapped his fingers, his expression hardening. The original was about to say something when a fluttering leaf streaked across his vision. The smile on his face froze. A fine trickle of blood slowly dripped down his cheek. All around him, bamboo leaves fell more and more thickly until the leisurely drifting foliage suddenly sped up each one slicing toward where he stood in the center like the frigid cutting wind from the east. Plucking leaves, flying flowers, ultimate version. Hundred leaves, thousand flowers. The original Luo Binghe flung out his palm, routing the dense assault of leafy razors. But for Shen Qingqiu, the entire forest was full of ammunition, thick with leaves that rained down like confetti, homing in on their target in hot pursuit. Though they appeared unassuming, with a single touch, they could carve flesh from bone. A leaf or two could be dodged, but hundreds upon thousands blotting out the sky as they enveloped a target was inevitably enough to fluster anyone. On top of that, the original had broken both an arm and a leg during his crude duel earlier, hampering his mobility. Shen Qingqiu was about to take his bullying further when a black shadow stole in front of him. With his remaining good hand, that figure struck the original Luo Binghe square in the chest. A look of disbelief flashed over that impossibly familiar face. And in that instant, Shen Qingqiu actually found it all somewhat unbearable. The original backed up two steps, his throat bobbing as if he'd swallowed a mouthful of blood. How harmonious, he sneered. Not bad, hmm? His words were mocking, but his good hand had already clenched into a fist, his veins faintly bulging. Since he'd come of age, no one had ever managed to push him this far. Being at such a disadvantage reminded him of the days when he'd been persecuted and humiliated, trampled over in all kinds of ways. The hot tea spilled upon his head, the cold and drafty woodshed, the relentless beating fists, the verbal abuse, the kneeling that lasted from the blazing afternoon into the dead of the night, the paucity of his meals. And connected to those days via a thousand inseparable threads was a face before him. But right now, that face's owner stood beside a person identical to him, cradling his double's broken arm, too afraid to touch it, but also too worried to let go. As if he himself could feel the pain, Shen Qingqiu frowned. Why did you fight him head on? And you kept fighting even though you knew your arm was broken. Don't be so reckless next time. It was a scolding, but the tone wasn't just urgent and upset. It was anguished and full of heartache. 
Even an idiot could hear that. A chill wind blew through the forest, rustling the foliage. Leaves drifted down one by one. It was so infuriating and so unfair. The image of the two of them standing together was so glaring that his eyes began to hurt, the rims prickling with heat. Even though they were both Wu Binghe, for what reason had that one been able to meet this sort of Chen Qingqiu, while he had only met a rotten bastard, vindictive, petty, and jealous to the core? For what reason? The carefully preserved clothes and belongings, the pristine and tidy side room, the gentle whispers, the boundless doting and indulgence. He'd only wanted to humiliate them because that disgusting relationship of theirs elicited nothing but his contempt. And yet, and yet the come with me that left his mouth in that instant was involuntary and it was addressed to Shen Qingqiu. Duo Binghe heard those three words and sneered. What did you say? Huh? His knuckles cracked from the looks of it. They had triggered a killing rage. It was true that Chen Qingqiu approved of finishing people off. He was a big fan of finishing things off. But if he had Luo Binghe kill the other Luo Binghe, exactly what would they be doing here? Then again, if Chen Qingqiu were to land the killing blow himself, that was even more unthinkable. Furthermore, what if the law that, quote, the male lead has plot armor, was still in effect with regard to the original Binghe. Shen Qingqiu pressed down on his Luo Binghe's shoulder with two fingers, telling him to calm down. As he was racking his brains as to how to deal with this, the original Luo Binghe moved first. He slapped away Xing Mo's paper seals. Dark qi and purple light surged forth, and with the other two still on full alert, he cut a dimension-severing slash, opened a spatial rift, and leapt inside. As he looked back, he viciously bit his lip. So infuriating. Then the rift vanished, together with his figure. Just like that, he was gone? He had been that easy to defeat? Though he was frozen for a while, Shen Qingqiu finally recovered, Head back and destroy Xing Mo's fragments this instant. You can't keep something like that around. The bugs in that thing's code were way too serious. If they held on to it, who knew what kind of ridiculous development it stirred up next? Luo Binghe silently nodded, though he probably didn't need anyone's support. Shen Qingqiu continued to lend him one of his arms to lean on. They'd barely walked a single step when Luo Binghe said mournfully, Shi Zun, is my technique really that awful? Ah, uh, to be honest, it was indeed awful, really awful, regardless of whether it was a matter of kissing, touching, stripping, or rolling around, the difference was far more than a few levels. And when it came to thrusting, he hadn't had the chance to compare, but if one followed this line of logic, it would also be, uh-uh, a fail. Obviously, Shen Qichu wouldn't say these words. Instead, he skirted around it with a, not really. The gloom on Luo Binghe's face grew heavier and heavier. After all, you don't have much experience, Shen Qichu consoled him. Binghe's skills had been honed through fighting hundreds of battles and having trysts with hundreds of women. Luo Binghe's head drooped. From the looks of it, he was probably contemplating squatting in a corner to grow mushrooms again. More than anything, Shen Qingqiu couldn't stand just watching Luo Binghe in one of these moods. This master will treat your arm and leg first, and once they're healed, we can do some exploring together, he said in a coaxing tone. How about 